my brother was about to the point of like, let's just head back. I don't care if it's a 10 hour drive home. He's like, this has just been a wreck. But I said, no, look at this. I said, what trips do you remember? Do you remember every day that had a perfect sunset? Do you remember a day every day that had a perfect hike where you maybe found the most beautiful flower? No. How often is it that you remember the days that were just didn't go as planned? Those are the ones you sit back and laugh at each other years down the road. Welcome to the Woman Angler and Adventurer Podcast, inspiring real women with a passion for fishing in the outdoors to go get their adventure on. Now, here's your host, coming to you from the Lance Chuck Camper Mobile Podcast Studio, Master Captain Angie Scott. Welcome, everyone, to this week's episode of the Woman Angler and Adventurer Podcast. I have a special guest with me. Uh, We've been following each other on social media for a little while, and this is the first time we're actually getting to have a conversation. So, uh, Rebecca Warner, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Angie, so much for having me on the show. And you're right. I have been a follower of yours, or some people might call them creepers. But (laughs) thank you from the get-go. You've been so warm and welcoming and letting me be a part of your group and follow you on your journey. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think it's important that we all support each other. And I know you've got a great show and or a couple shows, I think, that you host. And so I definitely want to talk about those. But before we get into that, if you wouldn't mind to just kind of give listeners a little background on you and how you got into this whole outdoor, crazy outdoor world that we're in. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's funny how it is. I didn't really have a choice. We'll put it that way. I, I, you know, I was born into it. I grew up on a cattle ranch in Western North Dakota, a pretty big outfit. And I was the oldest in my family and my bedroom growing up. I can't even make this up was my dad's reloading room. Ah, so wow. all of the guns were on the walls, <laughs> everything. I know if you'd bring this now forward today's times, right. my parents probably would have gotten in a lot of trouble. <laughs> but my uh, my so I was engrossed into hunting, fishing, camping, hiking, anything in the outdoors. Of course, horses. I you know I, I being on the ranch, we trained all our own horses. At one point, we had forty five horses wow. that my brothers and I trained ourselves, and as well as it's a cow calf operation, and that we continue on to today. Sorry, I'm centering there. <laughs> We've carried on to today, so we really haven't had a choice. And uh, hunting and fishing was just a big part of family time. My dad was really big into supporting quality time, and quality time didn't mean necessarily going, you know you always had to learn something and learning something would be in the outdoors, hunting and fishing, or it could be feeding cattle. It could be running equipment. It didn't matter, but we did it as a family and he treated hunting and fishing as those activities that, you know, you could, no matter what, if you had an argument, a bad day, at least you could end the day on a good note. Mm. Yeah. That's something that I feel like is kind of getting lost in today's world. Um, So Mm -hmm. I think it's awesome that you had that kind of upbringing And obviously it made a huge impact on your life. (laughs) Oh, it did. You know, and and sometimes I laugh when I visit with people as I meet them across the United States and and we joke about today's times. And I'm like, yeah, no, I grew up 90 miles from a Walmart. Can't even make that up. 90 (laughs) miles from a Walmart, uh, 20 miles of gravel roads. So you get to said ranch. Uh, You know, my hometown is 150 people. I mean, just to put it into perspective, and so when you hear people talk about the backcountry and stuff like that, I didn't realize it until I got into the communication world of, of, you know, promoting agriculture, outdoors, conservation, all these things that, wait a second, I grew up technically in the (laughs) backcountry. So I, I imagine you guys probably ate a lot of your own food then. Yes, yes, yes. We we always have had freezers full of beef. Of course, I got to give a plug there because I'm a cattle rancher. <laughs> but we grew up eating a lot of venison, a lot of walleye fishing. Walleye mm. is really big up where I'm at. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, sometimes you catch some northern uh, catfish, things like that. But walleye is kind of like the king up here. 
And that's kind of, yeah, it's always been not a, not a shortage of those kinds of things in the fridge. Sometimes growing vegetables a little harder out where I'm at. That's mm -hmm. the thing. The gardening gets a little more tricky. We just don't have the water that you do say, I know you're down in Nashville or mm -hmm. not Nashville, but Na um, Tennessee yeah. area, Angie, and you guys, I think have like a little bit more of a humid climate that probably mm -hmm. works better for gardening. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Gardening is not my forte. That's why one reason why I live on a houseboat. <laughs> so I don't even have to do any landscaping or any of that. But I do appreciate people that that like I appreciate the beauty of it, you know, but it's just not my thing to take care of. So <laughs> mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. so That's the fish right. fishing you speak of, is that mostly on the Missouri River or where where do you guys fish? Uh, yes, we do do fishing on the Missouri River. Uh, my family's ranch is called the Knife River Ranch, and we have 10 miles of the Knife River on it. Mm. And so I grew up doing a lot of that, uh, and whether we're ca canoeing, kayaking as well on the river. And then Lake Sakakawea, or as we refer it here as uh, the big the big water, but Lake Sakakawea is an excellent fishing area for anybody that has any desire to do some major walleye fishing. Mm. I really recommend hitting the big water. We we do a lot up on Lake Sakakawea. That's a nice. big one for us. Nice. Mm. I've been to North uh, several times. I went to North Dakota as a kid growing up in Minnesota. My grandpa lived in a very small town, so I kind of know what you're talking about. Um, mm. My mom graduated high school there, and I think she had six people in her class. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes, and to think, look at us now. It it does work out. <laughs> yes. It's okay. We can come. We can come from small towns, riding small little school buses, or as I joke, the short bus. Sometimes I'm like, wait a second. I literally grew up riding one of those but it worked out okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> um and then i have gotten to do some fishing there we fished uh missouri river a few years ago and then devil's lake um which we caught some nice walleye on devil's lake so oh they have great fishing on devil's lake yes mm -hmm. or if you go a little bit further south on the missouri and go to like um lake oahe which is right over the border um of in South Dakota, it's kind of how there's just it's funny how the Missouri has so many different names along it, but there's some excellent uh ice fishing. I don't know, have mm. you gotten into doing much of that, Angie? I ice did, fishing didn't, <laughs> didn't really as a kid. My dad took me the one time, and it was like the, the old story here sitting on a bucket out in the middle of the lake, freezing your butt off, not catching anything. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, this isn't really for me. But since I've started the Woman Angler and Adventure podcast, I had some opportunities to go back up and then experience it the spoiled way where you're <laughs> in a heated you know hard shack and you don't even know you're you're on a lake it feels like you're in a cabin and you just got a little hole in the floor and you're watching the flasher like video game fishing you know so that's that I can get into <laughs> there there you go there you go that's when you bring along a little something special in the uh hot cocoa or something to mix with <laughs> exactly. your coffee. Exactly. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have that too. So, but, but yeah. Um, and now I did want to touch on, cause I've got a little bit of a, uh, a campaign going on my show right now for South Dakota pheasant hunting. Um, <gasps> oh, and that's really, a great place to go. Yeah. They're yes. really trying to get more women um, involved. And um, mm -hmm. have you done much pheasant hunting yourself? I've done a lot of pheasant hunting in my life. I also helped doing guiding for pheasant hunting. Oh, nice. So yes, yes, that is a great sport to get into. And if you're, if it doesn't matter if you're a man, woman, child, whatever age you are, I would say, you know, pick up the shotgun, give it a try. Uh, on top of just pheasant hunting, what's been great is, and I don't know if you've seen it where you're at, Angie, too, but up here in the Dakotas, it's being, being really promoted getting into clay pigeons mm -hmm. and, and trap shooting and all of that. And that's what makes the sporting clays. And then you get into pheasant hunting. It's really become like an all-around, all-a-year kind of sport once you invest into, say, a shotgun. If you're kind of thinking to yourself, I don't know if I want to spend the dollars to invest in another hobby, it is one that you can probably do all year round or quite a bit nice. so i would definitely jump in on some excellent pheasant hunting in south dakota is a great place to go one of my favorite things about it is um i'm not um my big thing is fishing obviously i'm not a, a big hunter but one of my favorite things about pheasant hunting because i'm such a dog lover is the whole dog the bird <laughs> dog thing aspect of yes. it yes i just love that yes 
<laughs> yes, it is. It is. And you, you, uh, you build a whole new relationship when you're training these hunting dogs. Mm-hmm. You know, they're always kind of our babies. They're special to us. But I think you can understand this very much so, Angie, that you build a whole different relationship when you start turning them into bird dogs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've seen some videos that South Dakota put out about that. And uh, I think there was a actually like a TV show. I can't remember what it was called now, but it's on YouTube. And the whole episode was about the dogs. And I was like, oh, man, that's just so that's just so special. So in South Dakota, hunting is our shared legacy, something everyone can be a part of. That's why we're focused on making our fields a welcome place for everyone. See how at huntthegreatestsd.com, where you can hear stories from sportswomen and learn what makes South Dakota the world's pheasant capital. While you're there, check out public land maps, hunting blogs, and season information for one unforgettable fall. Learn more at huntthegreatestsd.com. Well, very cool. Well, I want to jump t- jump gears a little bit here and touch on your show, The Bend, and, uh, and then you also have Ranch It Up, right? And... Uh, you do co-host uh, Jeff Tiger with you on uh, both those shows, and I just want to touch on how, like how you got into that, how those get started, and and what's it all about. Well, as I joke, I am a poster child of you never know what's going to be next or around the next bend in life. <laughs> uh, I I uh, had no plans of becoming a radio host, uh, syndicated or anything like that. And my um, on my other half, yes, as you said, Jeff Tigger Earhart, he is my co-host and producer on almost everything. He's been syndicated for many years. And a couple of years ago, him and I had started a communications business together. And I was just doing more so the back work. Uh, We were working very hard to promote agriculture, um, conservation, outdoors, all of the things that we're passionate about. Uh, But we were doing it through um, just a couple of shows. Well, he was on the phone with uh, some people in Nashville (laughs) and said, hey, Tigger, what else can you come up with? And he said, hey, I know this gal. She's hunting, fishing. She's cowboyed with all kinds of people. She's, she does all these things. And, and she's, you know, there's no women doing an outdoors show right now on the Sirius satellite channel that we're on with Mm -hmm. RFD TV. He said, there's nobody doing that. What about we do an outdoors show and it has a woman lead and I know the gal for it. And they went for it and he got off the phone and I'm like, who are you just talking about? I said, you know, I've been looking for friends to go like hiking and do some stuff with. And he's like, uh, it's you. <laughs> you just got yourself a radio show. <laughs> so that's kind of how it went from there. And we've just been rolling with it. The bend is about kind of everything in life. It's let's pull the big rig over, get out of the tractor, get out of the office, get away from your, your mundane, you know, the kids, everything else. And it's kind of to inspire, empower, and show that it's always great to try and start something new mm-hmm. or to build that passion. And huh. the biggest thing is to share it with others, you know, get your family, get your friends. You know, we weren't blessed with kids ourselves, but we've worked really hard to be that crazy aunt and uncle <laughs> that our nephews are like, hey, when do we get to go on a trip? Or, hey, you know, will you take us, you know, camping or backpacking in or something like that? Yeah. And it's just really to show what you can do and promote a positive atmosphere for everybody. Love it. Well, you definitely have the personality for it and <laughs> and the voice as well. So, <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. So, how can people listen to the bend? Where's the easiest way to to find it? Probably the easiest way would be to head to thebendshow.com and you can then subscribe to it on any of your favorite podcasting apps. I'm streamed everywhere. Otherwise, if you do have Sirius XM, I'm on channel 147 every Saturday at noon central time, as well as you can check your local listings, AM, FM, public radio throughout the United States. It just varies on the times when I'm aired, but I'm very, I'm aired quite often on Saturday. 
Saturdays uh, throughout the country. But we always have every episode available as a podcast. And if you are into the cattle world, into ranching or anything else, like she said, we also do a show called Ranch It Up. And that is uh, the Ranch It Up show. And you can follow it and find it the same way. You can find us also on social media, Facebook, Instagram, we're everywhere. Just, <laughs> if you find the Bend, you'll find Tigger and Beck. <laughs> awesome. And uh, the Bend, com- the podcast comes out every Sunday, right? Yes. As a podcast, it comes out every Sunday morning. And uh, please, we look forward to having you listen. And then also, if you have any ideas, suggestions, tales of your own to share, topics, things like that, I love hearing from the field. I love hearing from all of you out there. Yeah. So you know, keep us updated. If you have field updates, especially if that's going into fall, and I know some of the different uh, runs are going to start happening with the different fish, you know, salmon is starting to run up in Washington, different areas. I want to hear about it. We want to talk about it. And if you have some awesome, fun stories, and they can even not be, you know, fun, they can be the ones that make fun of us ourselves too. (laughs) We love to hear what's going on. Like, how are you enjoying the outdoors? Awesome. Well, I, that was one question I was going to ask you is like, how do you guys come up with weekly content for the show? Just because <laughs> I know that can be a struggle sometimes. <laughs> oh, you know, and it's so funny you said that it's it's uh, become kind of a, a whole other lifestyle, like I said, to come up with not just weekly content for these shows. But like you said, you mentioned we have a morning show, too. We do country mm. morning every morning. Oh, wow. Our day starts at 4 a.m. Mm. And uh, we, we wrap that up around 10 a.m. And, you know, you're right. You just kind of learn to keep your ears open, your eyes open, and listening to what people have to say. And all of a sudden you pick up on, you know, whether they're saying, boy, I wish I had time to do X, Y, or Z. Or you hear of somebody that just went and did something that isn't the, isn't norm. It, it just makes you kind of go like, hey, let's talk about it. Mm-hmm. Love it. I'm sure social media is probably a good resource as well. Um, you know, seeing what people are posting about and stuff like that. Oh. Oh, it is. Social media is amazing. Well, that's how you and I connected yeah. with each other. Exactly. You know, we're we're from different areas of the country, but we found each other through social media. And that's a huge tool. And it's a, you know, if you think about it, it's a, f- a free tool. And mm-hmm. it's something that can be organic and isn't going to cost you a bunch of money or anything like that. And that's one thing we've worked very hard with is being very real and open about our lives. But we're not there constantly, you know, showing, hey, I just shot the biggest buck or the biggest fish. No, we're showing like life. <laughs> Mm-hmm. you yeah. know the fails and the wins yep we share it all and that, that makes it much more uh, ability to relate to others exactly and it's so important we've been talking about that a lot on the woman angler and adventure podcast um even the the episode that just came out um before this this one uh we talked about retention for women in fishing and one of the best retention ideas that was shared down at ICAST when we did a women's meetup was being real on social media because if you're always just showing all the fish that you catch and then some new new person goes out expecting that that's going to be their experience and then they get skunked uh they're going to be like well this is for the birds you know this isn't <laughs> this isn't what you know what it's supposed to be <laughs> and so to show the all of it, the wins, the losses, the, the skunks, the mistakes, you know, all that stuff. That's what, you know, is is actually real. And so that's going to help retain newbies when they try it for the first time. So that is awesome to hear that that has been kind of the chatter and the talk, because mm-hmm. I think we all saw this massive surge with COVID, right? Everybody all of a sudden was like, oh, the outdoors. And we're like, those of us that have been in it forever are like, it's always been there. And mm-hmm. But all of a sudden, these people had their blinders taken off their eyes and they're going, whoa. But then they noticed the sales were amazing for a year or so. Mm-hmm. And then you're right, the retention. How do you keep these people going into it and, and staying positive? And you're exactly right, is by sharing the realism, mm-hmm. being real. I didn't light the fire on the first try. <laughs> right. I sat there and had <laughs> wet wood and you know my camping trip didn't turn out as a massive success the first time. I had the tent blow over on me. I had X, Y, or Z. I went fishing and yes, I may have caught one or two fish and the stringer wasn't tied on and they went down 
down the stream and, you know, <laughs> it's being very real and being able to sit back and laugh at each other. I say that all the time. If I can't laugh at myself, why live? <laughs> and you'll find out that at the end of the day, getting on the outdoors is supposed to be a way to release the stress, relieve yourself from some of that stress in life. So then enjoy it. That's what you, you know, make those your successes. Uh, I went on a uh, backpacking trip back in June with my mom and my brother and his whole family. And it was a bit of a wreck. We'll just be honest. We went up into Montana with our own ranch horses. My brother and I have elk hunted there many a times. And my mom has always wanted to see where elk camp was. Mm -hmm. And so we decided to take her in the beginning of June thinking, okay, no problem. Loaded all the horses, everything went up there not thinking in June that we would encounter snow. We are used to elk hunting in October <laughs> where then we just plan for snow. Right. We figured June, it's not going to be snow. Oh my gosh. We had a trailer jackknife and snow. Oh, we man. had all kinds of issues. I mean, my one, my brother was about to the point of like, let's just head back. I don't care if it's a 10 hour drive home. And he's like, this has just been a wreck. But I said, no, look at this. I said, what trips do you remember? Do you remember every day that had a perfect sunset? Do you remember a day every day that had a perfect hike where you maybe found the most beautiful flower? No. How often is it that you remember the days that were just didn't go as planned? Those are the ones you sit back and laugh at each other years down the road. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that. Thank you for sharing that story. <laughs> yeah. This has been just truly a pleasure. You're you're obviously very energetic and so you've uh you've lifted my mood today and I'm sure <laughs> <laughs> um all the listeners listening to this uh feel the same way. So uh thank you so much for coming on the show and I uh, highly encourage everybody listening to go check out the bend as well as ranch it up if you're into that. And I'll put links to all that in the show notes for this episode to make it real easy for you to go find. Thank you so much, Angie, for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. And I can't wait to hear from all of you. <laughs>